find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, today is June 10th, 2014, and this is That Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. Uh, so, from Pittsburgh, I'm Malango, and as usual, we have Sorg. How you doing, Sorg? Hey, Malango, ready to talk some movies, ready to kick off this podcast day uh, and have some fun here. Nice, nice. And Mad Mike, how's it going? How you doing, Malango? It's going to be a good movie week. It is. Hey, hey, Mad Mike, side note, before because we have to jump to the movies, but side note, uh, are you a hockey fan? I'm a hockey fan. I am a hockey fan, but I am not a New York hockey fan. <laughs> that's that's so interesting. <laughs> well, it's your it's everyone in Pittsburgh's fault. I'm a Pens fan. <laughs> uh, so I, I just wanted to make my jabs at New York, even though I lived there for a year and a half. So, but that means nothing. Let's be anyway, fair, you lived in New Jersey. That doesn't count. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Right. I guess. Plus, Plus, jersey. the Sharks blew a 3 0 lead. Come on. Kings can do the same thing. This is true. This is true. <laughs> All right. So, as as Mad Mike has already rubbed into me, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, you got to find a better way to put that. <laughs> yes. Yes, he, he reached, through the, reached through the camera and, and took my neck and said, I know movies, and he was correct again. I feel like this is two weeks in a row. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm going to make another prediction this week that might shock you. That so, might shock you. Uh, so basically, this is just how this whole thing played out for me, right? Somewhere on Sunday, I think Mad Mike or somewhere else, I got a, a Twitter saying, hey, Edge of Tomorrow is going to pull in third. And I'm like, what? That was actually a good movie. I, I like that movie. And then yesterday, I'm at a grocery store, and a bunch of freaking teenagers are sitting around talking about how they cried in Fault of Our Stars. And I realized, teenagers can destroy box office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Guys, always doubt the powers of tweens. Uh, the Fault in Our Stars pulled in a whopping $48 million. Holy crap. No one is going to get laid watching Tom Cruise die a whole bunch. Maleficent <laughs> whopped in a 34.3-ish. An Edge of Tomorrow, Groundhog's Day, and Oblivion, the mashup. 28.7. Wow. So here's – here's I'm not going to do my review. Just out right of curiosity, how much how much did X-Men pull in? X-Men pulled in 15, uh, 15 – about 15 mil. Oh, uh, it was down 51%. That's still less than half. That's yes. less than half of Edge of Tomorrow. I, I, this is true. I won't – on record, it was pretty close. It was so, pretty close. I'm not going to give my review, but I will say – it's it's not as bad as people think. I'm holding on to the cult classic. Uh, there's another podcast uh, that does a movie draft, and I know the the guys that have Edge of Tomorrow are rolling in their not graves. But... We're talking uh, we're talking uh, core killers, right? <laughs> yeah, core yeah, killers. Yeah, I listened to that, that too today, and they had a really good look at the. Um... Uh, uh, the the fault in the stars. I'm like, this is a really good movie. It's a really good cancer movie. Um, and uh, <laughs> it, it, and it, it 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 kind of yeah, teenagers. Uh, yeah. There you go. I'll, it felt like that. Um, it felt like uh, that weird that weird indie movie that nobody's really even going to get right. And boom. Well, it's also based on a very popular book. That's true too. That's true too. Yeah, I uh, let me let me see who directed this. Josh Boone, Boone, 
Bad uh, Bible Church. Yeah, I mean, he's a nobody, but I won't say that. Uh, that doesn't matter. Somebody. That doesn't matter. Stuck, stuck in love. I never, I don't think I remember that. I think, I feel like, isn't that on, I feel like that's on Netflix. Anyway, that's the movie. That was last weekend. It was, it was great. Go see Edge of the Mar, people. It's amazing. All right. Go moving see along. X-Men, you'll have a better time. <laughs> 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 Probably even uh, if you've seen it already. So uh, I should have done this first, but uh, that's okay. So this week, uh, we obviously talked about the movies that happened last week. Um, I'm just going to go into it. I already missed that. So we're just going to move along. Uh, so, yeah, we have George Clooney and Josh Brolin are hooking up with the Coen brothers for Hell Caesar. Uh, basically, I like George Clooney. So I think this will be... I don't think we've actually had, like, a great Caesar movie coming from that point of view. I also don't – I'm not sure who's actually going to be Caesar. I feel like George Clooney would make a really uh, – I don't think this movie's about Caesar. This doesn't look like it's about Caesar. It, it might not be about Caesar. It, it says – it says the story follows a Hollywood fixer in the 1950s working to keep a studio stars in line. So unless it's about like Caesar Romero, I don't think it's true. <laughs> uh, Caesar. Uh, C A A. C. Well, either way, I mean, I like I like the Coen Brothers, and I like what they produce. I like George Clooney, and. Uh, Josh Brolin is a, also a very good actor. So I'm kind of in the camp of whatever they produce, I will probably go see. But also based on that track record, I don't see this being a blockbuster. I feel like this is going to be like one of those indie or like uh, Oscar nominee type films. Like uh, we're, we're coming from No Country from Old Men, True Grit. I feel like it's going to be something along Oh Brother Where Art Thou type line. But I mean... Interest? Anybody? We'll see. Or is it, is it too soon? It's too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, other things happening in news. Um, hey, we have a villain for Daredevil. How do you guys feel about that? I'm excited for this. Now, now who, who is the villain? Vincent uh, D'Onofrio. And this is and this is this is the guy of uh, of uh, uh, Law and Order Criminal Intent fame, right? And it looks like he's going to be. And he was also the villain in the first Men in Black movie. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Is he's he going to be playing the Kingpin. Oh yes, that's true. Uh, I think he'd make a good Kingpin, and I like that we have his picture looks the part since he's shaved his head. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really excited. I just. I love the character of the Kingpin. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of wish Michael Clark Duncan was still with us so yeah. he could reprise his role because he was amazing in Daredevil as the Kingpin. Yeah, I was, was going to ask, how does he compare to, to that? Because I feel like, I mean, this character actor um, is very uh, – Vincent, he's a really good character actor. But compared to the old Kingpin, I mean, we just had, like – brute strength and just the size mm -hmm. and everything i feel well, like well also uh, you know the character is supposed to be presented as you, you think he's a fat ass right and he's supposed to be very surprising when he gets to the brute strength side of it and maybe that's something they can pull off with uh with uh Vincent d'onofrio because he doesn't look like uh, or maybe he is gonna be a jacked up guy that they hide under a suit you know um, well i mean he he pulled off having really unassuming strength well in men in black he was tossing around will smith like nothing <laughs> that's true that's true but there's a little more um i got okay i was going to say uh lack of physics involved but i guess we are talking about superhero <laughs> movies well no but i no but i mean kingpin is the character in the comics he's very strong yeah but he doesn't have any superhuman enhancements no he just happens to be a lot of muscle he's and just, not a lot of body he's fat. just deceptively strong for what he is <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's good. Uh, good name actor, somebody that we've seen around doing a lot of good stuff. Somebody that's known for a lot of good movies like Men in Black and, of course, you know, uh, Law and Order and everything. Uh, adds a little bit of credibility to something like this that you know 
Uh, although I don't know how much we do need to add the credibility to Netflix only originals when stuff like Orange is the New Back is ripping stuff up and a, a, a house of cards. Um, um, I, th I think this is going to uh, uh, stack up to those, I think, very well. So, is this? I'm probably I probably should know this. This is considered a Netflix original, right? Yes, yes, because it's being developed. It was picked up by Netflix. It's just like how Shield is a ABC original because it got picked up and, and ordered by ABC. Even though they're both yeah, Marvel Netflix Studios. Is gonna have, Netflix is going to have like Bob and then a Defenders arc. So yeah, it's yeah. the first in a series of stuff that Netflix is going to be putting out. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, hey, uh, the movie that I am thinking we should talk about this week is uh, Transformers, a new mm -hmm. TV spot popped up, Age of Existence. Um, and I was reading a little bit about the bio. This is the uh, Mark Mark Wahlberg, uh, Stanley Tucci. Uh, but basically, this is Michael Bay's. I don't. I don't even want to say final installment. I mean, it is clearly labeled Age of extinction and i'm pretty sure i wouldn't be surprised if we got another movie yeah but we've but, had revenge of the fallen we've had uh, what was the last one even <laughs> i was i was gonna say if this one doesn't have unicron in it it's not the last one no <laughs> <laughs> because michael bay will not be satisfied until he can make an entire planet go boom yes um yeah basically uh Based on the trailer, like, I don't know. I didn't really feel, like, I, I think after the last movie, all of the Transformer movies are just kind of dull. And, I mean, like, I don't go into them thinking, all right, I'm going to watch something, like, epic story. I'm just looking for the explosions. You know, you're, well, you're talking Michael Bay sci-fi. Or this, not even sci-fi. This, this is the first Transformer movie they've had where they're not pushing that Megatron is around. So that might be a little bit of a different take on it because it's not, you know, it's not going to come down to mm -hmm. Optimus versus Megatron again. It's not yeah. Autobots and Decepticons. It's, it right, looks like right. something a little bit different. So. And there are some clues that actually, I mean, if you know some of the Transformer lore, uh, there is one character name that's popped up that, that, that uh, you know, if you know Galvatron from the original uh, cartoon, uh, that leads to it could be a Unicron movie. Um, so, but of course, they're going to keep that kind of under wraps until, uh, until you, you go see it. You know, and, and I kind of like that. Like, we didn't really know what The Fallen was until we finally saw the movie, you know, um, and, and they explained it. Because they, they, they do, they are departing so much from what we know of Transformers. And, and let's see what Michael Bay's version of this is. Why does something like the Dinobots and what look like Predacons uh, exist in this version, you know? Um, so it, it, there's a lot of uh, stuff that, you know, they really spun it on its head. Like back in what the second movie when I said yeah Transformers have been here for a while and some of them are still around they just haven't been woken up you know yeah and they're showing like mm -hmm. like like the first cars the first like you know horseless carriage cars were Transformers you know um and and old bombers and stuff like that like that's that's kind of a cool concept um and 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 something that that adds I think added to it unfortunately I wish that movie was a little better. Um, but, uh, and I, I like the new version, uh, that you're doing. So, and I'm excited to see what happens. And Optimus Prime riding a dinosaur. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need to know anything about the plot. You just need to see the image of Optimus Prime riding Dinobots. Nobody's coming to this. That's it. For the plot. That's it. Everybody's coming to see big freaking robots fight on screen that kind of remind them of the ones of their childhood in some cases. <laughs> So, but, I mean, a quick bio. I mean, the bio itself is actually pretty interesting because it's leaving. It's starting off right with where it left off. So we're basically going to see a city that should be torn apart, basically. And you have the shadow group, which makes it look like, you know, the um, our transformers don't necessarily trust yeah. humans. Exactly. So Exactly. Like well, it makes sense because the last one was about uh, one of the Autobots turn that that the humans trusted turned on them, and Chicago got taken over. You know, not just a skirmish yeah. in the desert or a skirmish in 
like the middle of Denver or whatever, in the middle of a desert in a city that they maybe kind of covered up a little bit and didn't do that much damage. They freaking destroyed Chicago, right? So <laughs> I can see some like like hey this is a just like i kind of expect the entire premise of superman being uh uh, uh people pissed because superman destroyed his is some uh, superman or people like him are responsible for destroying metropolis you know um i i feel like that's the kind of thing here like the general pipelines or at least some sex uh of 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 humans uh, which is actually something they've done in the most recent cartoon too uh that that there is an anti the uh, Autobot anti uh, Transformer uh, shadow group, you know, and and, yeah. and it'd be cool if they if that's what we're kind of see is that kind of uh, uh, element kind of coming through. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely looking forward to it. But I'm a long time Transformers fan. So nice, nice. All right, uh, moving along. Uh, so this weekend we have an epic. I'm considering this an epic clash, an epic throwdown. How to Train Your Dragon 2 is going up against 22 Jump Street. Mm. So we have your classic humor versus animated awesomeness. That's all I'm going to go with that because the first, the first How to Train Your Dragon was freaking amazing. But I don't know. I mean, right now, personally, I'm going to see both of these movies. I'm going to figure out a way. My wife's going to get pissed at me, but I am going to figure out a way to see both of these movies. I don't know how yet, but yeah. I'm looking forward to this. And, 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 and Malengo, you, you're listening to the same podcast I do. I know the one guy on there got to see this about a week ago and uh, could not say enough good things about this. And I think yes. I want to do the same thing of, of watch the first one and then go watch the second one. See, you, you guys are missing the bigger picture here. Hmm. This is the battle of Jonah Hill versus himself. Oh, wow. Jonah Hill is going to make a lot of money this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make a lot of freaking money this weekend. <laughs> what character does Jonah Hill play? He's in uh, How to Train Your Dragon. He was one of the... Um, the other dragon riders. Oh, out loud, out loud, yeah. Wow, that wow. is yep. That is genius. Jonah Hill. <laughs> Jonah Hill is going to be making bank this weekend. And let like right now in Rotten Tomatoes, these movies are literally at a ninety-two and ninety-three percent each of them. That's Jump crazy. Street is I... not. <laughs> Jump Street is ninety-three percent. And How to Train Your Dragon is a 92%. Wow. And uh, according to Chachi in the chat room, 22 Jump Street is the highest testing Sony movie ever. Wow. That... Awesome. Yeah, like, uh, I shouldn't have actually wrote down these numbers because I'd like to see how much um, how much 22 Jump Street and both, uh, how much both movies made in their opening weekends. But I don't. I don't think that would even matter because both of these movies weren't going up against each other in their opening movie like weekends. So yeah, I don't know. I personally, they're going to get money from me. Somebody's going to get a matinee price, and the other person's probably going to get full price. Either way, of, either way, you're going to help Jonah Hill get some bank this weekend. Yes, you better call me. <laughs> in you better take me out for coffee. <laughs> All right, so um. Which movie do you guys think is going to emerge victorious this week? Oh, How to Train a Dragon. I really think How to Train a Dragon. I think the kids. This has the kids plus uh, grown ups like Malengo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, this is. I think this is. I don't. I know we talked about this, but mm -hmm. I don't know at what point uh, DreamWorks like tipped over into legitimacy I think it, in their animation. I think it was this first movie. I think was, so too. Was, I think well, that was I, they were already pretty legit with Shrek. Well, I yes. mean the first Shrek, but then they like muddied their waters with Shrek two, three, no, four. Shrek two was better than Shrek one. It was when they <sighs> once they got into Shrek three and four, that's when things were a little like, okay, now Mike Myers just needs some money. Because, like, I, I liked How to Train Your Dragon so much that I bought the book set on the behind. Although, I mean, with my background, that 
it's not too far fetched. But still, like I went out and bought the DVD with the digital copy and the Blu-ray for no reason <laughs> other than just to support this movie because it was that amazing. I think I got and, the, I think I got the extra DVD version of this one, like where it came with like those those um, weird fifteen minute extra mini movies yeah. they did. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. And we already we already know there's going to be a third movie, but mm -hmm. it's going to be a wrap up movie. So they oh. said this one's going to have a definitive end, but there will be a third one to conclude the overall and arcing. Story. Have we talked about the fact that the series, um, which I think has been on Cartoon Network up till now, maybe Disney, uh, is now the second season is going straight to Netflix. It's it was Cartoon Network, I think. Yeah, yeah, and Dreamers, of course, has had a pretty good uh, relationship with Netflix. They, they, uh, some of their other series, like the Turbo series, uh, the upcoming Shrek series, are also all currently Netflix originals, uh, as well as you know showing all the movies and, and, and those weird fifteen-minute shorts of Monsters vs. Aliens and 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 Shrek and and Kung Fu Panda have all been on there as well. Um, so I think that's a really cool partnership that they're doing with Netflix. Um, and it gives a lot of credit, again, back to that Netflix credibility that you're getting the studio that say, Hey, here's our, you know, how to train a dragon series. Um, that's, that's going to be pretty big for them. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I, like I said, I, Jonah Hill is going to be getting my money. So <laughs> this is, this is awesome. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I kind of just kind of wish like uh, I yeah I don't know I don't know what to say I'm shell shocked. I think I think Edge of Tomorrow is going to be number six this week. It's gonna yeah. be so far down. It's falling off. Yeah, yep. it's gonna be I mean, it's gonna do great on HBO. Let's lead. All right, yeah, let's just continue. <laughs> let's lead into that for what we were watching this weekend, and I'll mm -hmm. I'll lead off because um because Mad Mike opened that door. All right, so Edge of Tomorrow is actually like I wrote a, I wrote a, I did the comic review on it, and I also did my my quick four like line review, and basically I said this is a good movie, go see it. It had good character development, it had good plot, it wasn't redundant, and the the way they actually did the like um, Groundhog's Day thing was actually pretty tasteful, in a way that you know it wasn't cheesy. Like, this is a good movie, and it just sucks because, like, I think they just kicked themselves in the butt with the promoting it. Like, I think it just killed it before people even had a chance. Mm -hmm. It reviewed well, too, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's up in the, uh, I think, like, 88 on Rotten Tomato. Mm -hmm. what is I don't it? know. I just saw so oh, much I promotional stuff for it. I saw so much promotional stuff for it that it feels like I've already seen the movie. The same here. It, it felt like they they is there over promoting because I feel like I saw it everywhere and I saw it everywhere for about a month straight. Yes, there um, is over there is. Yeah, I mean, I I, I present you Amazing Spider Man two. Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing that sucks about the way they promoted it. I think it just caused a sour taste in everybody's in everybody's mouth. Because of his promotion, but I can honestly say what they promoted isn't even the story. It's a very small snippet of what occurs. I mean, it's basically just the plot. Like he never wakes up, you mm -hmm. know, and that's I mean that's it. But the story concludes. It has a beginning that's definitive. It has a really good end. Like it sucks because like I recommend that people go see this full price mm -hmm. if they could. Um, and maybe IMAX if they wanted to, but I agree with uh, Mad Mike. Based on the movies that I mean, the Teenies, they they're the ones that pretty much dictated this week. And now you're going up against a comedy and a freaking animation. The teenagers already went out and saw Maleficent. They already went out and yeah. saw their X Men. They're like, you know what? Let's not see things blowing up. We got to take the girl out for the date to get that Mac and time in. I mean, I yeah. still wouldn't be surprised if Bolton Our Stars finished ahead of Twenty Two Jump Street. I wouldn't be surprised. I that'd be crazy. PG thirteen chick against a crazy. comedy. Oh, I can see it. Well, I, I don't it. know because you got you got Chan Tatum, Chan Tatum. Yes, Twenty One so. Jump Street is rated R. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna kill a lot of that. It's that rated is. R. He's right. It's rated R. Like I wouldn't be surprised. And, and if that's why. And that's two. the that's the other reason why I think Dragon's gonna be uh, uh, kicked up a lot. You know, over twenty two jump jump street. Um, oh yeah, Dra- I really Dragon. I think is definitely gonna win the week. I think I think Dragon's gonna. Uh, as far yeah. as the tweeners, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be Fulner Stars. I think. Huh. Huh, I mean, well, actually, looking at looking at next week, next weekend we have uh, Think Like a Man too. Oh, so there's a very good chance that Twenty Two Jump Street just makes its money back next week. And they Kevin just Hart. Away. Oh, really? Again? <laughs> Another why, Kevin Hart? Why movie. is he, why is he on my TV again? That Kevin Hart. Sorg, Sorg, he. All right, all right. Uh, this is a quick sidebar. Okay. Into, <laughs> hey, wait, wait. Um, is this is this related to your tweet earlier? Uh, yes. I saw you ranting about Kevin Hart. Yes. Um, Kevin Hart needs to stop. Stop invading in everything that I love. Uh, <laughs> when when I'm because I actively avoid Kevin Hart. Um, then I see him in trailers for movies I don't want to see that look like Entourage, only done horribly. Um, he ruined Turtle from Entourage for me because he was in a movie with him. Now he ruined water for me because he promotes water. <laughs> and now he's going to be on Raw next week, which oh. really just... Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yep. Yep. So, Kevin Hart, just stop. Uh, he's stop making what you're money. doing. He's making stop. what he can while he still can. He he almost ruined everything for me because his dumb vitamin water ad has him pretending to be Al Bundy in a shoe oh, What? Yes. That's like, that's that's touching something sacred to some of us. I know. Wow. Four touchdowns in one game. Four, four uh, touchdowns in one game. Four touchdowns in one game. That's that's not right. That's not right at all. <laughs> I'll take me Good. somewhere else. Is it, is, 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 um, is I he, wouldn't be is surprised he? if Kevin Hart is voicing a Transformer. Oh. I wouldn't be surprised. Is or he, a turtle. Is he, he like might voice Michelangelo? Is he like the new Tyler Perry that's just everywhere, and I don't understand why? No, not Tyler Perry. He no. um ah crap, I can't remember the other um, the, the 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 black comedian from the one um, from Rush Hour, Chris Chris Tucker. No, oh god. <laughs> Do you understand the word that's coming out of my mouth? I mean, I guess so. I was actually thinking uh, Coming to America. Oh, Eddie Murphy. He is not Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. He's nowhere but, near no, Eddie Murphy. Oh, no, come on. No, no, see, In my see the main fundamental difference is Eddie Murphy is funny. <laughs> and point. <laughs> yes. And scene. What's it? What else? Talk about something to make me happier, Malengo. <laughs> Malengo, what else did you watch this week? I saw, uh, well, I saw an indie uh, documentary, The Heckler, um, but I'm going to skip over that one. Uh, it's on Netflix if people are interested. Think, it's basically just on comedians complaining about heckling. I think and... I've seen this one, and uh, yeah, it, it was a pretty oh, interesting that one. Like What's that? Yeah, it, it is interesting. I recommend it. It's on Netflix, but um, I'm going to get into a million ways to die in the West because it got a very bashful review last week uh, from a lot of critics. And basically as somebody who enjoys family guy and enjoyed Ted and likes Seth MacFarlane, I will say that this movie is funny, but if you do not like any of those stuff, do not go see this movie. Mm-hmm. They're well, yeah, very, and- and as I talked about, like when I saw it, you see, you've seen a lot of the jokes in the trailers. Yes. Yeah, and a, a lot, like a lot of the buildups are just so like Seth MacFarlane. Like, all right, I know what he's doing. All right, let's just sit through this. And oh, okay, that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's just like wow. If you if you don't like any of this stuff, then like if you don't like, like somebody had a good argument too. Like, oh well, you know, if I like Ted. Shouldn't I like this movie? No, it's different. It's not the same as Ted. Ted was snappier. Ted was faster paced. Hmm. This is very different. So, but I mean, with my, I guess with my quick review, I mean, I think I agreed with you, Mad Mike. Like, 
I'd say if you like this, if you like, if you like that genre, what Seth MacFarlane has branded, go see this movie. I don't think I would pay full price. I'd say go, you know, matinee. Um, if you don't like it, I don't want to say Netflix. It. Wait for it to come in the mail. Catch you by surprise. It's almost like Seth MacFarlane just wanted to do his version of Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Because, I mean, he did his version of Star Wars on Family Guy, and that was fine. Yeah, definitely. But it's like he just wanted to do a version of Blazing Saddles for this generation. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. That's my recommendation on it. It was, It made me laugh, and then there's certain parts where I'm just like, wow, this movie is kind of long, <laughs> like, for what it is. Um, and, but he works well with a lot of the uh, with the female uh, lead. Uh, he works very well with, with that character. I think she held her own in uh, relating, like, comedy. Charlize um, Theron, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, that's, that's what I watched. And then I watched a lot of television. I actually spoiled uh, Game of Thrones for one of my coworkers. Oh, no. oh, why would you do that? It was, in my defense, it was their fault. I walk in because I, I was watching the basketball game on Sunday. So I missed Game of Thrones. Like, I, I completely spaced. So I come in, and I'm like, oh, so what happened? Because I don't care about spoilers. And they tell me everybody died. No, but they still... Stop it! <laughs> no, I've seen it. I just don't want to piss off people out there. I, well, I mean, not everybody died. <laughs> I mean, there are some people. Like, a lot of people no, George, died. George but, R. R. Martin is still alive. But, yeah, so far. So, um, without spoiling anything, in my defense, when I hear that, and I, after what we just saw two weeks ago, I'm thinking that the storyline is going in that direction. Obviously, it wasn't. They were talking about the wall. <laughs> So I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, don't 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 you dare spoil what happens next week. <laughs> oh my you god! Dare yes. I will reach through the computer screen and strangle you because I have not read the books. Ooh. I do not intend on reading the books until I can read books safely without being spoiled on TV shows. Well, that according Mike to the other podcast that we listened to, uh, cut the cord. We've we've actually reached the point. Where the book and the TV show are just almost on par. What are so, they doing? What are they gonna do next? Yeah. So now you can't be spoiled by the book. So nobody the knows. This is scary. Show. This is the scary part. This is the great unknown for some people. Now it's gonna now get scary. Anybody can die. Are they really that far ahead now? Apparently. Yeah. Wow. And okay. that's and that's I after taking that. the last two seasons to do the last book. <laughs> Yes. No, wait a minute. No, they have at least Nobody four books out, I thought. I was going to say, they have another book. Yeah. Like, there are like four or five Game of Thrones books out, right? No, I'm pretty sure, based on the podcast that we listen to, Mike. But, uh, we'll look at we'll look at that again. We'll, 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 yeah. We won't get too far into that. Uh, uh, Mike, you watched some movies. I did watch some movies this week, Sorg. Um, I'm going to, in the order of which I like them. Um, I first saw Trouble with the Curve, okay, which was um, uh, the movie with uh, Clint Eastwood, Justin Timberlake, and oh, uh, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, Amy Adams. Mm-hmm. And uh, Clint Eastwood's a retiring, uh, an aging baseball scout. And for a baseball for a baseball flick, it was actually pretty decent. Um, it was a tad predictable, a tad predictable, but everyone who was in it did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Clint Eastwood, as always, is fantastic. Amy Adams was really good. And Justin Timberlake is a nice little love interest for her. Very, very good. There are a lot of like uh, smaller roles that have pretty big stars in it, too. It's definitely worth a watch. I think it's on demand on HBO or Cinemax or one of them. Um, then uh, the girlfriend and I had a – she had a $2 she had a two for one Redbox coupon. So she got 21 Jump Street, but then decided to also get that awkward moment with uh, Zach Efron. Oh, just to clarify, it, it looks like that is available. Trouble with the Curve is available on uh, Cinemax. Cinemax, okay. Um, so that awkward moment, it's it's a cute flick. It's it's um kind of a realistic like I don't understand 
why they picked that title because I feel like there are better titles that they could have for this movie. Definitely. But I really I did enjoy the movie a lot because it it's just three guys who um, one of the guys is in the process of getting a divorce. So the other two decide to stay single with him to show solidarity. And of course, as soon as they decide that, that's when they start getting into relationships. So it's it's a really, really interesting look. And um, Zac Efron was great in it. He was really good. If you liked him in Neighbors, you'll love him in this because he's a little bit less douchey. And I, I stress only a little because he's still pretty douchey. Yeah, he's but, douchey for what his character – I mean, you, it was it was believable that you would have a friend that could be like that. Oh yeah, I have friends like this. <laughs> I have friends like this. That, that's that's not even an issue. Uh, and it, it takes place in New York City, which is always a plus for me because it actually looks like a movie that was filmed in New York City, oh, as cool. opposed to other movies or set in New York City and filmed in L.A. Um, and then the uh, the last movie I saw was Twenty One Jump Street. Because I want to see 22 Jump Street, and I didn't feel that it was necessary to see 21 Jump Street beforehand, but I wanted to see it anyway. Uh, 21 Jump Street's awesome. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Channing Hill, uh, Channing Tate, Jonah Hill are hilarious together. Ice Cube is great. Uh, every, everything about that movie is just fantastic, and... There is an amazing cameo by Johnny Depp, which I'm not going to spoil how that happens, but <laughs> it's it's the thing I've liked Johnny Depp the most in the past 20 years. So yeah, that's sad. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was it was really really good, and it definitely makes me want to see 22 Jump Street even more. Nice, nice, nice. All right, um, Mike, did you watch anything? Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely TV. nothing. I went to. I went on a trip, so uh, well, movies were not a part but, of the trip. By the way, happy belated anniversary! Thank Sorry. you. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Congratulations. Thanks. Awesome. So with that, uh, yeah. So uh, that's our show. Um, if you guys want, uh, we have a Facebook page, a uh, Facebook group. Go there and tell us what movies you will be watching. And what's the name um, of that group? It is the movie, the Rambling Movie Minute group, or something like that. The, it's um, the Rambling Movie Minute on Facebook, and you just put up a poll about uh, which movie are you going to see this weekend. And I just voted in the poll as both of them, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, so where can we find you guys, Mad Mike? Well, if you want to talk to me, and Lord knows you do, uh, you can find me on the Twitter at MadMike4883. And Sorg, the great Sorg. Uh, all my things over at Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron on the Twitters. All kinds of fun stuff there. I just did a fun video review over at InsertCoinToBegin.com um, of Hitman Go for the iPhone. I got to get a little green screen action going on there. So go check that out. It seems to be doing eh, kind of okay as far as the hits last I checked on it. Uh, so uh, And I hope to do some more like stuff like that. I'd love to do something like that with movie reviews or something. Malengo, think about that. Maybe go yeah. check it out. So let me know what you think uh, as far as a video guy goes. Huh? Huh? A little bit? Yeah. Hey. yeah. That could be interesting. And I like your website site that's up now that you can tell people about now yeah the rambling mango i'm still doing work on it but the comic strips are up um kind of you know that feel of not straight humor and not straight review more think far side for movie reviews it, it, it feels uh, like uh the few i've seen here it feels like you will not get the joke unless you saw the movie <laughs> Yes. Oh, that is very clear. Okay. You must see the movie because okay. to understand what's going on. Oh, although, Malengo, I have one quick note about your doctor's visit in Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. um, having not seen the movie, I tell me if I'm wrong about this, but if I, if I was Tom Cruise going to see a doctor in Edge of Tomorrow and he came in with a skin knee, I'd imagine the doctor would just shoot him in the head and bill him. <laughs> well, based on based on this movie, the doctor would probably understand it, but then yeah, shoot him in the head. Uh, okay. 
sorry. That, I just wanted that, to make sure. The shooting in the head thing. Did you get that from the trailer, or is that yeah. just? Yeah, I got I got that from the trailer. <laughs> oh yes, that. That's a joke that they play around with a lot in the movie. Uh, but yes, go check out. I don't know what movie. Let me know on, uh, I guess, on our group, on the Facebook group, if you think there's a movie that I should review uh, coming up. Because right now, it's probably going to be How to Train Your Dragon. But uh, yes, I'm going to have to do both of them at some point. You should just do a cartoon of Jonah Hill swimming in cash. I should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, Mike, so uh, you got a bunch of other shows coming on, so we will uh, sign out. And since we don't have a tagline yet, I'm just going to say see you guys next week. Awesome.